Facebook Live for anybody watching woo! on Facebook Live. Woo! Thank woo! you. I really appreciate you. Wait on Walter Heen to come, but we might just get started and then integrate him as we go. Um, if anybody wants to grab food, walk outside, grab it. So Cell phones let's off. Lay down some, let's just lay down ground rules, I guess, since we're here. Um, yeah, please sign on cell phones. But does anybody, everyone here got smartphones or cell phones? Because we're going to do this format a little bit different. We didn't get any note cards because I'm not that organized. So the way we're going to do questions, we're going to allow questions. Unlike the CNHA panel, that was one sided with no questions, but never mind that. But we're going to have questions, but we're not, but similar to CHA because I understand why they did it because this raises a lot of passion, a lot of energy. So please email your questions to emuotmt at gmail.com or just post them straight to the Facebook Live and we'll try and track it. And hopefully somebody can give me those questions or I'll pull them up. And that's how we'll do it. Just in respect for everyone's time, because I know that you know, people ask questions if we start going too long. So just email the questions in. We'll get to them. I think I will get them right here. I'll read them off. Got them on my phone. Yeah, we gotta watch all the banging movies. All right, well, I think let's get started and then when Jeff shows up, we'll go from there. So, let's open up this page. So, hello everybody, aloha, welcome, thanks aloha. for coming. Aloha. I'm Samuel Aldekim II, I'm the Executive Director of Imua TNT, uh, our founder's down here, Malia, hi Malia, say hello. Uh, um, we wanted to have this discussion today because the 30 meter telescope is a really important issue in our community. I think it brings up a lot of passion, a lot of energy on all sides, and it's something we absolutely sh should continue to talk about and have a conversation about. And in Imuotmt's opinion, we're just having our voice hasn't got out there, and that's you know our responsibility in, in a lot of ways. So we wanted to have this panel discussion to be able to open that dialogue and start that conversation, and hopefully we can continue on. Hopefully we can have more people, more panel discussions, you know, more discussions with both sides and at the table in front of the audience, in front of the cameras. Thank you to all the news media that showed up here too to help us, you know, have this conversation. And so we'll get started. We're, our panel discussion today is going to have Walter He, we're going to have Makana Silva, and we're going to have Wally Yushibashi, and they're all going to introduce themselves, uh, and I will start. So, my first question to all the panelists is going to be, you know, what, who, please introduce yourself, and why 30 meter telescope is compatible or not with your native Hawaiian identity, and kind of what you think about the current situation, and we'll go from there. So. My name, like I said, is Samuel Wilder King II. My family goes back, uh, well, I guess it goes back all the way, depending on how you count. So my, one, one line of my Hawaiian family came from Kalani Ho'olumokui Ke Kai, who was one of the chiefs of Oahu, got pushed off a cliff by Kamehameha at the Battle of Nuwanu. And he, well, we, uh, what was, one, of his, uh, one of his daughters was then given to one of my European ancestors, Oliver Holmes, uh, who was lost at the Battle of Nuwana, but was not pushed off a cliff. And he ended up, and then his children uh, carried on. One of my, my next ancestors, or there were, I don't know the genealogy as well as I should, but the next line down was James Anderson King, uh, married to another um, Native Hawaiian lady, and named Mahi. Um, he was actually part of the provisional government after the overthrow and was one of the ministers, I think Minister of Interior or something like that. And it kind of goes, if you want to know a lot about that, I brought this book just for everybody, which I've been plugging like it's my book, but it's not. Hawaiian Sovereignty, Do the Facts Matter. It used to be like 30 bucks on Amazon and then I started telling everyone about it and now it costs $350. <laughs> so Google it, it's free on PDF um, being maintained online. So if you Google it, you'll find it. Uh, after that, my great-grandfather was James Anderson King's child, uh, Samuel Wilder King, the first. 
He was the first Native Hawaiian governor of the territory of the state of Hawaii. My grandfather, Samuel P. King Jr., uh, Samuel P. King, he was a federal judge that was involved in many cases and was involved in broken trust, along with Professor Randy Roth, who I think is here in the audience. Mahalo for that. Um, my, my, parent, my dad is Samuel P. King Jr., my mom is Adrian King, they're both attorneys in town, and I'm Sammy Wada King II. Everybody thinks I'm the third judge. No, no, no problem. I'm just blabbing, so you're good to go. <laughs> and my son is Sammy Wada King III. Kalani Holu Mokui Kekai. And then my other one is Jackson, and his name is Kalani uh, Kapua, which is my name. So I got both my kids named after me. I'm like George Foreman, the boy. <laughs> but, you know, my aunties, that's the names they chose, and you and aunties say that's the name, that's the name. That's where you go. So. My opinion on 30 meter telescope is that I think it is a fantastic project. From the, from the project specific question, my opinion is that it's paying us tremendous economic dividends, obviously unlike any telescope that's ever come before it. And there's a reason for that. And the reason for that is that we stood up and we said, you know, this $1 thing was nice back when the tsunami hit the big island. And that's why we brought the telescopes in the first place. And we wanted to have that business and that economic development, but after that, we really want some rent. We really want some economic development. And 30 Meter Telescope came in and worked with the community to say, what can we do and what can we offer? And what they offered was, well, we can pay you a million dollars in rent, we can pay you a million dollars for a scholarships for Keiki on the Big Island, and we can have a workforce pipeline to get this, these students into high-tech jobs, high-paying jobs that's diversifying our economy away from tourism, that's awesome. On top of that, it's studying the heavens, it's studying, it's advancing humanity, and it's blue sky thinking, the kind of stuff we need to do as, uh, as humanity, in my view. I think that the issue of my Native Hawaiian identity, there's, there's no clash. I think they can both be melded together. I mean, I think the story has been told numerous ways by people with a lot more authority than me, including Kalepo Bayan, about how our ancestors were navigators and our navigators continue to be the best celestial navigators in the world. And that study of the stars and the heavens can't continue, and it can't continue on Mauna Kea. And there's other people that have said the same thing and talk about how because of the, because of the way the mountain will be used by the, astro by the astronomy community, and because of the fact that the astronomy community has been taken to task, rightfully in some cases, about how they manage the mountain and how the Office of Mountain Care Management has reformed that, I think that the business and that opportunity is excellent and it can preserve the sacredness and the special spiritual nature of the mountain. So that's where I'm coming from and I think the issue is bigger than just the TMT. It's obviously, like everyone knows now, this is not just about the 30 meter telescope. It's also about the history of Hawaii and the story that we tell ourselves and the history of where we came from and what everyone knows. I mean, I'm learning a lot. I mean, back, back before I started reading all this, I thought the United States of America just landed troops and invaded and took over the place. And I found out, oh, that wasn't exactly how it went down. So that was a fascinating thing to learn. You learn about how the United States of America told the revolutionaries to give the entire monarchy back and then they didn't because they had de facto control of the place. And that's an interesting factoid because I've also heard people say the kingdom's still around. And those people I've spoken to on Mount Akea when I've gone up there and I've talked to them about what is, what is the proper authority of the state. And they believe that they have the right to civil disobedience and to block the road because they believe the kingdom still exists. And I, I, that's not true as far as my research is concerned. I mean, I mean my legal training, I'm an attorney and you know, a clerk at the Supreme Court. I've looked at these issues. I've read the Supreme Court decision, which we have copies of here, and they dispose of that question in, in two paragraphs. And that's something I don't think a lot of people know. I didn't know and didn't talk about, and that's why I keep telling people to at least read this book, which, and the reason, again, that I recommend it is because my grandpa's on the back saying, this book is a must read for those who wish to further the sovereignty dialogue. Don't read the book. So, I think it's an important conversation to have, and I think we're having it, so I appreciate everyone being here. That's me. Judge, why don't you introduce yourself and talk about where you're coming from in this position, and we'll go from there. My name is Walter Heen. I'm a retired judge. I got tired of working. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
actually I did really. I, uh, I became the manager of the Office of Minor Care Management, or the director of the Office of Minor Care Management. In the year 2000, when the, uh, when the report on the uh, extent of operation of the Monarchia observatories and the plan for restructuring and for installing the larger telescope. I took the, took the job because I thought that it was very important that the telescope be installed, not just from the standpoint of the preservation or forwarding of the knowledge of, obser of, of stellar observation and the history of the world, but because it stood in my mind as a monument to Hawaii's amazing use of astrology to travel from the lower Pacific to the northern Pacific and then in between the islands. And it, it, it was a stellar performance of using the stars to find out where you are and where you're going. Push this a little bit away from you. Okay. I always did talk too loud. <laughs> um, when, when, I, when, I had, when I took over the job and I agreed to become the manager, I really didn't know what was going on up there, but I did remember this. When the first large telescope was proposed for installation, I believe it was in Jack Burns' first term in office, there was a large protest and attempt to dissuade the, the state from the territory from installing the telescope. And the protest then was essentially the same as it was and is now. This to Hawaiians is a sacred piece of ground. And they don't believe that it should be desecrated in any way. I agree that the mountain is very important to our genealogy, to our background, to our history. But I also believe that the Hawaiians believe in sharing. And they've been sharing and sharing, perhaps too much, perhaps not. But I do believe in the telescope. I do believe that it is an advancement in knowledge that Hawaii can be proud of and Hawaii and Hawaiians can benefit from in the long run. And Judge is being a little bit modest here. What have you, have you done exactly, Judge Heen? You were a house rep, you were a senator in the ledge, you were also OHA trustee. That yeah, I covered. I've been around the track a few times. <laughs> <laughs> and you're only 50, so great. Okay. Introduce yourself, Makan. Tell us a little bit about yourself and where you're coming from. Hi. Okay. Well, my kapo, everybody. My name is Makana Silva. Uh, no more uh, real long history yet, but right now, a bit of a background. I'm from Nano. I'm from Makaha. I'm from Makaha. Grew up out, out the outside. Uh, went to Kamehameha Schools, grad 2014. And then went to UH, Manoa. 2017 with my degree in physics and now I'm going to Ohio State working on my PhD in physics. Cool. So actually right now I should be in school working but I'm here right now because I think that this is something that you know I need to be part of this discussion that we as a, as a community as a people need to be we need to have this discussion and at least for me where I'm coming from with the TMT is that yeah I do support it and for me it's not even because you know a lot of people tell me it's because of my bias that I study physics and whatnot but I mean, even be, for me, the thing that really pushes me to take the stand that I do is because I believe this is a new way for us to practice our culture, a new way for us to practice what the Hawaiians did and still do in the past to get to where we are now. And that's just kind of what I'm going to advocate for, is that this is a modern way to perpetuate our culture in a global, in a, in a global manner. And to me, I think that's, that's the most beautiful way to pay homage to our people then and now.
So that's just a little bit, I mean, again, I don't know more long history, so that's about it. From <laughs> Wally, you Wally, you probably have a long history on this every subject day. longer than everybody. So why don't you give us a little bit of that background, you know, to the start, talk about where you're coming from and uh, okay. where you are now. Hello, my taco. Hi, hi, Ishibashi. OMKM Senior Advisor for Director Stephanie Nagata. Um, historical people, historical events happening to our Lahui, our kingdom. I came here, I wasn't on the agenda, but I just crashed in this party. <laughs> It's a wonderful party we're in right now. The unification of our kingdom is, is, is before us right now. I'm going back in history a little bit. I retired from the Isles of Hill. I was negotiator on the Big Island. Developed from the overthrow to 1920 when the Hawaiian Homes Commission Act was formed. You look when the ILWU was formed. You guys gotta go do some homework because it's many years of history we're talking. When the ILWU took over, we continued the fight of the overthrow. It was because of the mistreatment of labor. It was because of the poor living standards in Hawaii. The kingdom wanted the best for our people. They thought that there was the way, sugar. But we ended up USED, 50 cents an hour, four bucks a day. <laughs> you got a whistle for your money. <coughs> so we had poor working conditions in Hawaii. That's why the LW came forward. We're not ambulance chasers. It's because how you treat the workers. That's why the union was formed. So LW was very social economic driver for the state of Hawaii back in the day. It was the ILW. So I'm proud to be retired from there. I advocate for the working families of Hawaii. That was my history. I retired from the ILW with that always in my heart. To better the living conditions, economic conditions of the working families of Hawaii. All of you as fathers and mothers only wants the best for your children. No different. It's no different. At LW, we had the logo that was, an injury to one is an injury to all. Mm -hmm. We all brothers and sisters under the skin. So the fight was real. The living conditions had to be improved. So that's why we formed in the 30s. Then came statehood back in the 50s. Hawaiian Home Commission Act, part of the Admissions Act. That was all part of it. Trying to make redress to address the needs of our Hawaiian people. No secret, the history. Now you're coming back trying to take care of the lowest rung of the economic ladder. You have the haves and the have-nots. I'm an advocate for the have-nots. The one who struggles paycheck to paycheck every day. So don't misconstrue my support for TMT. I am for the people of Hawaii, regardless what nationality you are. As long as you work in class, you're my people. That was back in the 50s of statehood. Now you're coming back to now, you look now where we are today, 2019. It's over 100 years of broken promises when the act first started. 100 years of tears and hurt to our people. It's not about prejudice, it's about the truth. I never create the Hawaiian Homes Commission Act. Congress never created that to make us separate as Hawaiian, they made us this way. So we gotta deal with what we have. 
the hand that was laid before us, the cards we're dealing with. We got to work within the system to get what we want. So that's why we got to move forward. So don't misconstrue my support for TMT as selling out the Hawaiian. No. Half a loaf of bread is better than nothing. How are we going to get economic rehabilitation for our people? How are we going to get educational opportunities unless we use the vehicle? Ride that horse, drive that car that TMT represents and take us to where we can go to the future. If not, we're going to be ending up in the back. And waiting again, and waiting with more broken promises. More hurt feelings and more hurt. It's not about dividing our people. It's not inclusive. We've got to be inclusive, not exclusive. We all live here on an island. We all should be helping each other no matter what. But never forget who this island belongs to. The wrongs that was done is true. It was, it was done. It's documented. There's no dispute. But we got to move forward. I have a lot more to say, but uh, we're going to take it from there. So yes, born and raised, Kill Kong. My family is the Puino family from Minoli, Kapolena, Kukui Haile. I recognize on a state, a historic as a cultural descendant of Kaoli. So yeah, my Kuliana is on the mound. I take that seriously. OMKM is there to protect the mound. Contrary to what everybody's saying, OMKM, Office of Mountain Care Management, is for the mound. We hold all the telescopes responsible and liable for their permits, for their operating on the mound. They don't like when we come in. I got a small staff up there that watches everything that goes on on that mountain. And the telescopes are held liable and responsible. TMT will be just as much as anybody else. So we can talk a lot on OMKM. I'm up there 24 seven. We just finished UH-88, nine months on the mountain. Nine months I was there. We just finished the parking lot. When the road open again, when you go up, you can find a brand new parking lot at the base. Six months every day on this mountain. Ensuring that the proper procedures and management practices are done correctly in order to protect our mountain. So, Dr. King, I don't know. I mean, I, I let you talk, Wally, because uh, you have a lot to say and you got a lot of story on this. So, can you talk a little bit about kind of the start of TMT, your kind of your role in it all and how you saw it? Wally. Okay. <laughs> Come back as my position as um, Big Island Labor Alliance. I was the president or chairman of the Big Island Labor Alliance. It's all of the different organizations, labor organizations in the state. Every island we have representatives. And we always, on a Big Island Labor Alliance, any project, potential projects, pending projects would have to be reviewed by the Big Island Labor Alliance. This was um, building trades to your master crafts, to your local tree, to all the different organizations. TMT in 2003, I started on that project as a labor um, officer for the ILW. It was my pie in the sky dream of having this big telescope. So it was a political move to get education to lobby for Hawaii or Chile. It was the only talk story, trying to convince why it's better for Hawaii or why it's better for Chile. And again, going back to taking care of the working families of Hawaii, the labor unions pushed for <coughs> That was my start of getting involved with learning as much as we can about what this project represents. 
and why this project is here today facing, why this project united the love with the kingdom moving forward. So that's how I started getting involved with our team. So going forward from there, uh, Judge, I want to ask you a little bit about the process, and I can speak to it um, a lot if if you're not fully read up on this whole procedure because it was complicated, and I'll just run through it real quick. And I want to ask you what you think of that process and if you have an alternative. And so let me run through a real brief summary of what I understand to have been the process. And maybe everybody knows this, but since we're all here, let's do it again. This is the environmental impact statement for the 30 meter telescope. This is the summary. Whoa. Whoa. Good these are all the letters everybody all wrote. Came down. Yeah. And these are all the cultural evaluations and whatnot that go in the appendix. It is not cheap to print this thing out. Um, nobody seems to care what's in this thing, to be honest, because it said that the aquifer is not going to get impacted at all. Everybody's still running around saying the aquifer is going to be impacted. So I think that's part of one of the issues we need to talk about. But fundamentally, this is how we did that joint fact-finding effort. But this wasn't enough, so then we went to a contested case hearing. So they had to apply for a conservation district use permit. So they talked about, so they went to the Board of Land and Natural Resources, and then they applied. So they went through the first permit process. The BLNR voted to approve the permit before they had the contested case hearing, which they did for a whole bunch of stuff, and everybody was kind of like, that's kind of weird, guys. You should stop doing it, but they didn't listen. So then, they went through the contested case hearing and produced a 350-page findings of fact and conclusions of law. This is not it. This is the second one. The first one, same length. That one got overturned by the Supreme Court because it appeared to be biased because the vote happened before the contested case hearing, which a lot of people saw coming. So TMT went back and did the contested case hearing again, and that was after the protest that started in 2014-2015. And they went through the entire process again. And the second time around, everybody that wanted to have a say in that contested case hearing, especially protesters, protesters, GIE, showed up and they cross-examined. Wally, I think you were there, right? You were up there? Okay. I think, Walter, you were on that contested case hearing too. The first one or second one? Then the, we had all the experts come in from EIS. They all got cross-examined by whoever they wanted. There was only one person who was excluded as a witness and that was because the only thing that person wanted to talk about was whether or not the state of Hawaii was legitimate and the overthrow was invalid, which was not relevant to the permit. I understand why people think it's relevant now, and I'm happy to talk about that, but it wasn't relevant to the permit. So after the second contested case hearing, which went over about three months, something like that, Judge Amano, who got appointed, produced this 350-page document. This is how we do joint fact-finding in Hawaii right now. If somebody's got a better way, and that's what I want to ask you about, Judge, in a second, then I would love to know what it is. But that's what we came up with. That's how we do it. But then it went to the Supreme Court because they, want, they appealed all the way up. And the Supreme Court validated the permit and said, you're good to go. And they walked through every argument that everybody had, including the addressing the fact that the state of Hawaii is part of the United States and was properly annexed by a joint resolution because Joint resolutions annexed Texas, and that works just fine for Hawaii, which is exactly what John Van Dyke said, and that's what the Supreme Court quoted. Although some people don't seem to take John Van Dyke seriously because he's not Hawaiian, which is what I heard on the mountain when I was talking to one of the leaders of the protest, which I thought was pretty ridiculous. But we'll get a chance to talk about that later, I think, with him. So now the law is clear that the road should be open, and TMT has the right to build, in my view. But Judge, I want to ask you, what do you think of this process? And do you have a suggestion for what we can do differently, if anything, in the future? Well, the, the process, after several attempts to uh, do it properly, in the end, is the proper process under our state of law. Uh, whether anything can be different is open 
to such large debate. I mean, you know, if you go by the old Hawaiian way, we'd still be talking, and there would be no decision at all. But at one point, in spite of all of the meetings and in, in regard to all of the issues, somebody has to reach a decision. And the law is made to arrive at that decision. Whether people think it's fair or not is, something, is another question. But I can't think of another way to do it, if that's what you're looking for. Wally, do you have a thought on that process and what you would like to see done in the future on projects like this? I mean, you might be involved in this, the master lease coming up. I wonder what's gonna happen that time around. I don't think anyone's guessing. So uh, do you have uh, any ideas? Uh, speaking in your unofficial capacity. Negotiations. ILWU, I negotiated multi-million dollar contracts on conditions of employment. You walk down the chain of hotels along the coast, Mauna Kea, Hapuna, Fairmont Orchid, Manalani Bay, Hilton, King Cam, Keoho, you go right around the island, Map Not, Sugar, I was involved with every negotiation around that island on the big island. Now you come today, we're facing this Harry Kim's plan. So let's talk about Harry Kim's plan. <laughs> Nothing written in your plan isn't already written. Either in the Hawaiian Homes Commission Act, either in the Admissions Act, either in the CMP, either in the, oh, what the other one was? Well, it's all over. It's already written all over the place that it's there. The only difference right now is 10.7 under the Hawaiian Homes. It's a new one that is. I still try to learn more about that process. And again, we're coming back to negotiating. How can you negotiate? I cannot take my committee from Hilton and go to King Cam Hotel and use that committee to talk about King Cam issues. Why are we not allowing the protectors to be part of the discussion? You come in in there, no matter, we're spinning our wheels, $10 million lost right now, and we went back to day one on the beginning. We're not talking, we're not following the proper procedures in order to find a resolution to this matter. Sure, they're not going to agree to TMT, but everybody should be allowed part of the process, whether you agree to it or not. That was always our union philosophy. It's a basic negotiation tactic. You got to include everyone on the discussion. They got to be part of the solution in order to any solution to be remedied. Right now, we're back to square one with this mayor's plan. We waited patiently to follow the letter of the law. We thought TMT did everything right within this power, within, that is required under the law. We came back to day one again with this plan. How can that be? After $10 million, everybody's saying eight, I'm saying it's 10, and it's only gonna be growing more. What a waste. 100 years of tears, we cannot even put our wines on the land, and we open it. I was East Hawaii Commission. I just got out this past May. I tried to scream my wheels. I'd rather be outside the tent pissing in than inside pissing on. So don't get, on, don't get me on the road when it comes to the Hawaiian people. Don't misconstrue. I support TMT for the Hawaiian people. Because that's the half a loaf of bread that we need to help move the thing along until you come up with an alternative plan that I can borrow from, that I can follow, that I can ride that white horse into the sunset. I hope somebody on the protector side is coming up with some alternative ideas. If and when TNT doesn't proceed, or if it does proceed, what are we gonna do next? We have the power right now. We have the mana. The Lahui has formed. So what are we going to do with that? Turn them off after TNT leaves? Turn off the light switch, off darkness again? That's what I, my frustration is about. Unless you're on the table being part of the discussion, you're not going to come up with a solution. Basic. Basic. 
that's a this is this is something that's very interesting to me because I think at some point the conversation about who's negotiating and who's at the table needs to happen, but the challenge is I think it's our kuleana now to have that conversation. And by our I mean the unelected citizens of Bahoy. I mean I think the governor would be great to go up there, but I mean Makana, I'm gonna ask you about that in a second, what you think about that plan. And I think it would be wonderful if the governor was talking to the protesters, but I think there's something that's important to recognize, which is that the governor's job is to enforce the law. If the protesters are gonna to talk to him, I'm all for them talking to him. I don't know if they're going to, because every time I hear the news, they're telling me they're not gonna to talk to anybody because there's no point talking if TMG is gonna go forward. Well, that doesn't really get us anywhere. But I think we gotta have this conversation. We gotta do more of these panels, more of these discussions to come up with more solutions. Like, like Wally said, we got, the, we got the mother now. Everyone's paying attention, so what's the plan? I don't think the plan is we're not gonna build a telescope and get all this money just because we have a specific fight going on right now. What I think we need to do is have this conversation. But the governor, I think I see why he's a little bit worried about talking to protesters because we don't want to validate civil disobedience for this long. At some point, the protesters do not have the right to be negotiated with all the time just because they're breaking the law. Are we gonna have people breaking the law all the time? I mean, I was just asked by Mahalani Richardson the other day about what I thought about the $8 million spent. What I think about it is, when are the protesters <coughs> going to take responsibility for that? Where is The Rock? Or where's Jason Momoa? They got eight million bucks. They built this platform for everyone to come talk about. I don't know anybody that talked to The Rock on the pro TMT side, because I asked them all, and none of them talked to him. So I would love for them to chip in eight million bucks. Everybody likes building buildings and putting their name on a building, but nobody likes putting in the maintenance funds. And that's what we need for this platform that we built. We got all the money in for building it, but now we got an $8 million maintenance bill. Well, who's responsible for that? The governor. The taxpayers are gonna be paying for it is who's gonna pay for it. The taxpayers, us, that's who's gonna pay for it. And at some point, we gotta have a disincentive for having this kind of protest or else we're gonna have it all the time, and we're already seeing it. So Makana, what do you think about this process of having a negotiation with everyone at the table? I mean, for me personally, I think that's the first step to any kind of compromise, is to just get our voices out there, to have everyone throughout the spectrum involved in this, this problem, kind of just talking, wowing, right? Right now, the main channel of dialogue is through like social media, and you get attacked, and you know, it's just, it's not really constructive. We're just kind of tearing each other down. As much as the Lahu is building, even within our own communities, people are being torn apart. So, to me, I think, to have, I mean, not just the government, even on, even on a grander scale, the, the influential community groups here in Hawaii, you know, KS, OHA, the Voyaging Society, to have them come to the table, because they as well are very influential and prominent figures in this discussion. The Kiyaki, you know, people from the, the pro TMT side, have everyone at this table, the same table, we can all look face to face and talk. I mean, I'm not guaranteed, you know, I, I don't know, I, I can't read the future, I can't necessarily say there exists a binary resolution, but if we're even gonna come or even expect something, I believe that's the first step. It's a coming and having this discussion, you know, talking, actually just talking about it. That's my take on it. Don't forget, you can email us questions, emuatmt at gmail.com. Yeah, I didn't want me to come. I saw some hands come up, and I want to say thank you guys for your questions, but I mean, I, I guess for the sake of, uh, I, I don't know. For the purposes of this discussion, I guess, please email, because I, I really personally want to hear you guys' questions, I, and I would like to address them. Comments, questions, you know, I don't know what you know, but what you just said. No, on the, to the I Facebook mean, page. Makana, you wanted to ask a question, go for it. Get somebody, ask a question. Anybody got a question for Makana? Yeah. Oh, oh, it's not really a question. Well, I, I want to ask a question. Like, no, ask I, I a want question. you to re respond to this. I don't. Well, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. We're gonna have. We're gonna have a lot of chance. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. I understand, Uncle. I understand. But we're gonna have a lot of time for panel discussion. We're gonna have a lot of people. But if you have a question for this panel, everyone's here to hear them speak, hear their manal. I got. I hear everyone wants to speak, and that's why we're not asking questions. We're not. We don't want speeches from everybody in the audience. But if somebody got a question from Akana, because he wants a question from the audience, I'll go over here. What's up? 
I think your question is, I think it's similar to what Wally said is, or Walter. So, Native Hawaiians have shared so much and given so much, how come we can continue forward with TMT? Is that where you're going with the, the religion, the culture? So Makana, what do you think? I mean, well, first of all, is that kind of along the lines of your question? I mean, I guess, so, so this is just my perspective and mine and as well as other people who I've spoken with is that well, the sharing aspect is another topic, but at least if we're within discussion of TMT, I feel like this is not just, we're just sharing something for the sake of sharing it. I believe this is actually a project that we're not just gonna share the land with, but it's, th there's actually gonna be a return for us. It's gonna be investment for us, for the people. Like, for, like our, our keiki, the next generation, are finally gonna have an opportunity to be leaders in STEM. Like, they can, t they can ride the horses themselves. They can control the project. And, and I'm not just talking about throughout the state or throughout the country, you know, whatever. I'm talking about global. I mean, right now what happens on Mauna Kea is a global thing. And to put TFT there and the promises that they're giving us, the kind of investment that they want to make in our communities, our public, and I talk about public school education communities. I mean, to me, I mean, I, that, that just blows my mind that, that a project wants to come here and they want to invest in our future, in our kids' future, in our kids' education. Walter, what do you what do you think about the where Hawaiians are at, where where we are at, and what we've shared, and where we can go from there? Well, you know, it reminds me of a question that was asked of me many many years ago. In fact, I think it was asked of me by my father. Yeah, it was. When I got my degree in economics from the University of Hawaii, he asked me, where is a Hawaiian going in economics? Where is a Hawaiian going to do? I said, get lost. And at this point, with respect to the issue of Mauna Kea, we are lost. We have a group of individuals banded together to protest Mauna Kea. And that protest is not just about Mauna Kea. It's about everything that has transpired in the history of Hawaii. And to a large degree, they're correct. They're absolutely correct. But that was then, this is now. We have to understand that we live in a world that we don't control. We control parts of it, but we don't control all of it. But in order to maintain our control, we have to develop our strengths, our education, and move forward. And part of moving forward, I believe, is allowing the construction of the 30 meter telescope because it opens up for our people, our children, and I've expressed this and stressed this to the developers of, and uh, the authorities at the University of Hawaii. You have to take this program of exploration of the stars down to the community of Hawaiians. Get Hawaiians involved in the ancient history of their islands. The ancient history of the islands is written in the stars. It's what brought us here. It's what's going to move us forward. But without that support, it's going to be a tough road. And they're 
on that road gone. Well, speaking to what Walter's point is, what do you feel that TMT engaged with our community, with the Native Hawaiians, Kahu Kumana, you, the other members on Big Island? Yeah, um, TMT did really a good faith effort out there throughout the years. Been involved in a project since 2003, 2004. Yes, there was numerous, numerous meetings. Was it enough? I don't know, maybe not. Maybe the wrong group was being talked to. That's what we're finding out now. But there was many attempts to reach out. The Kaukumang Bar consists of OHA, consists of Kamehameha representative, employees. They was all up there. We have protectors on Kaukumang Bar for years, for years. Bottom directors was there for years at different organizations because we are a community-based board, community-based Hawaiian advisory board. Let's go, come on. So we had many different people on the board talking to TMT. You know, so it's yeah, we did good faith attempts. Put it that way. All right, we got so we got an email in. So what kind of so this is for Makana, this is for you. Oh, yeah. Oh. Well, yeah, I mean I know we we'll come, we'll come we'll come back. We'll come back. We'll come. We'll get you. We got you. I know I know you committed. We got you. Oh, we ain't gonna leave here at twelve fifty. I don't, I ain't leaving at one o'clock. I mean everybody else, you guys let me know what you're gonna do. We have this question. What kind of message will stopping TMT send to the children of Hawaii? Makana. Why don't you start? Because that's kinda you. I mean for me there's a lot of interpretation. For me, this is all about interpretation. If I were to see TMT go, being, I mean, being on the side that I'm at, it would kind of be, in my opinion, the decline of like Hawaiians, Hawaiians uh, taking a leadership role in STEM. You know, at, at, least, at least through the lens of astronomy, through the lens of astrophysics. Because when that goes, that's gonna send a message to other projects that wanna come here, that wanna contribute to the community. And with that, it, people, in my opinion, people are going to start asking, so what do I do? Like, what kind of future am I going to have? Like, like, like what's the point of actually like, pursuing these kinds of education, these, these higher educations into STEM? And I think the avenues to, to, to actually go and be leaders in STEM are going to be that much more harder, be 10 times more hoops. There's just so much more difficulties associated with it. I mean, money is one thing. But just having, re like, money's just, you know, one way to get your education, but then you have to get the resources, you know, to actually conduct the research, to actually get them published, to, to get it out there. You know, science is all about doing the research and et cetera, et cetera, but then it's about communication, about getting it out there. If you don't have a way to get it out there, I mean, that's, that's not science, that's the science of the network. So ultimately, that's, that's my take, is that the decline, in my opinion, of just education and leadership in STEM is, is what I would predict would follow. Actually, I have no idea what the answer to this question is. Well, actually, any of these questions. But when you were growing up, did you think that you were going to do astronomy in Hawaii and astrophysics and physics like you're studying now? Did it translate? I mean, did any of the stuff that's happening in Mount Kea, astronomy, the discoveries, did that feed into your life when you were growing up and your study? I mean, if I'm being completely honest, my journey, for, for, I mean, for those who know me, my journey through physics is more of a recent one. I've always been kind of into science, but I have to figure out my way through different sciences. Uh, I've obviously heard of like the, the contributions Mauna Kea has, has made to the world of astrophysics um, in high school and whatnot. But I was never really as involved as I was within like the last couple of years, really involved with it. And I mean, where I'm at now, I feel like it's a dream for me and myself as a local boy to come back here and to, like, I'm, I'm, talk, I'm talking about the dream, dream, like all the stars aligned, to come back here and to not just teach, but to go back to Waianae. I mean, you know, for, you get plenty of community, but my heart is in Waianae, so that's the first of that I go. Go back to Waianae and give back the things that, for me, I, I never got exposed to. If I didn't go to Kamehameha, so my freshman year was actually at Waianae High School. <coughs> when I went to Kamehameha, I was at high school, sophomore year. If I never go to Kamehameha, I'll be real with you guys, I probably wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it's impossible, I'm just saying that the resources available at Y9 Kamehameha Schools is night and day. And for me, it really helped get to where I'm at now. 
So, you know, the model, like TMT is kind of, in my opinion, the pivotal beacon to just education, big things, education. And, you know, maybe if you have that kind of passion, at least the way I do, then you can take that education, you can promote the culture, you can promote it in a unique way. So, that's, that's my take on it. How are you? Um, yeah, Uncle. I'm sorry, Uncle, can I ask you? Yes, um, constructive criticism. No, yeah, uncle, 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 uncle. We want, we got, everybody, we got the same, we got the same thing back here. We got the same thing. We want a question. No, it's a question. I'm talking. We're talking. We want a question, I thought. Let me speak. Let me speak. A question. Let me speak. We can have you on the next panel. Questions. Why wasn't the protectors, the KI invited you all talking about bringing you, everybody got to come to I can answer that. I can answer that. I can answer that question. So first off. Also, you're talking about construction, giving the local people jobs at the review. You got 27,000 Hawaiians waiting for your homes. Oh, we'll building homes. You got construction work there. I agree with you on that one. So, on the first question, why? I, I, I don't agree with you on that one, but I agree with you on the first one. But on the question of why the panelists, why any anti uh, protesters were not invited, I'm inviting them right now. You, Imua, TMT at gmail.com. We send me an email, we do another panel. You let me know when. I, I saw the CNHA, well, CNHA had a platform. That's the. Council for Native Hawaiian Advancement at the Native Hawaiian Convention, and they had a panel about TMT. They didn't invite me, and I emailed them a couple weeks early, and they had a little thing that said, your program might change, you know, it might come up. I didn't go, I wasn't there. So why didn't they invite me? Where was I? Where was Imua TMT? We out there, they're using our logo illegally without our permission, so they know who we are. So you could definitely have put me on that panel. You could have put Makana on that panel. Anybody can get in touch with me, imuatmt at gmail.com. We will do another panel. I welcome it. Every time I've tried before, there's been resistance. So that's why they're not, they're not here now because I know these guys. Nobody else is contacting me. So I'm happy to have that. As far as Hawaiian homelands, I agree with you 100%. I don't understand why we ain't building homes on DHHL land, left, right, and center. High density, all kinds of things. I don't know what the issue is. I, I would love to find out. So we got another question online. This one is about Ho'oponopono and Wally, I think you spoke to this, and you know, Makana, I think you might have an input on Ho'oponopono too, but Wally, do you think Ho'oponopono is a way forward to resolve this issue? Is it appropriate or is it not the right mechanism? <laughs> too late. We, we should have done this a long time ago. Ten years ago. That's, that's the problem. So yeah, we, we discuss this over and over, building this over. I'm not here to discuss about all the benefits TMT bringing to our community. They're bringing all these benefits. We've been talking about benefits for 10 years, about education, the economics. No, open open should be done long time ago. That's the Hawaiian way, and that's the problem we're facing today. That's why we divided. How are we gonna fix this divide is my question. Will we go from there next? Hell. Or well, maybe somebody's gonna send me an email and we'll have a conversation about it soon. Oh, I was not finished. Oh, uncle, uh, uncle. The children, the children you're talking about education for the children's future. They got no future, they got no home here. I, uncle, I agree with you about building homes. You wanna to talk to somebody about building homes, you come talk to me anytime you want, anywhere, and I will talk about it because we need to build more homes in Hawaii. We got another question online. So this person is asking, oh, from McCutton, oh, McCutton, you got called out, buddy. Uh, all right, all right, real quick, guys, I just want to reiterate, I'll, to, to the hands that we see, we're sorry we can't really address it because I think we're gonna give priority to the email questions. So if you if you can, I don't Yeah, if you can, send the email. I mean, it's not an email, people, Facebook Live, right? Yeah. Huh? Not sending emails, you're posting out on Facebook Live. By the way, you send me an email, emotivg at gmail.com, and you should send, hold up. Who, who did you talk to on the Mauna when you talk about Mauna leadership and you refer to, you went to the Mauna uh, for Sam? Oh, because in the beginning you said- I know, I know, I know. So I know. Can, you, can, can you say a name? I mean, I can. I don't know what he wants to do about it, but yeah, I can talk to, I mean, I talked to Dexter Kayama, who is a great guy. I mean, Kaleko, both great guys. And I also talked to a couple other guys. I mean, but they were, I don't know if they were considered protest leadership, but who did you talk to, Makai? Oh, we talked to Auntie Pua, Kauko Makaiwa, Couple, couple other, oh, um, uh, Hope from Maui College, I believe. 
And because they said because people aren't Hawaiian, that's why they're not going to listen to him? I mean, is that... I mean, I don't know if he wants to make a point of it, but yeah, that's what Kaleko said straight to my face. So he can come and we can invite him to the next panel and I would love to talk to him more. Because what I also heard up there on the Mauna was that people think that Hawaii is infected with settler colonialism. How many people, raise your hand, you know what's settler colonialism in here? Anybody? Half. Good. So settler colonialism is the idea that if you ain't indigenous by somebody's definition, you don't, you're a settler. And you're imposing your law. And I don't, you don't belong here, I don't know what you're supposed to do, but you ain't got the rights that the original people have. I don't know if they're talking about the Marquesans who showed up in 400 AD, or you know, the Tahitians who showed up in 1400 and dropped the Kapu system on them. I don't know who we're talking about, but that's the deal with settler colonialism, and that's what drives a lot of people up on the mountain. At least when I was talking to the Kalaikoa. <coughs> and I've heard it before, and I've seen it on the internet. Not, and settler colonialism is just a... If not here, then you need to please make sure that... Well, I mean, he... I, I, was okay. happy, I was happy not to talk about it. I'll go, I'll go, I, assume, I assume he texted you. No, nobody texted me. I just want to know because when you, when you say, when you I, I, stuff, you should say... Andy, you're, Andy's you're absolutely saying. correct that I shouldn't even be speaking for him. He speaks for you himself. And I, you can speak about what he said. You're absolutely you, correct. But you cannot speak about what he thinks. Or you're absolutely correct. But I, def, I definitely know that the concept of settler colonialism drives a lot of people because I sat through a class about it at Hulu University. And they were telling a history of Hawaii that was just wildly inaccurate. And they were selling it like it was a class. And for example, in this class, somebody said, oh, well, the definition of colonialism is when a stronger power with more advanced weaponry takes over a uh, lesser, weaker power. And my question is, okay, what's the difference between what you think happened in Hawaii and what happened when Kamehameha I took over the islands? Because he conquered from the big island. That's why the state's called Hawaii, right? It's not called Maui. Because Kamehameha showed up with more advanced weaponry. And I mean, the answer I heard from people was that, you know, it's civil war, it's not colonialism because we weren't recognized by the family and nation. But this is the point, like this issue is not the way to have this conversation. Like we're all here now. And you say settler colonialism, that's just a play way of being racist as far as I'm concerned. Because you're just gonna tell people, you can tell my wife she's gotta go somewhere else. She's born and raised here, but she's not Hawaiian, she just gotta leave. Everyone just gotta leave if they're not Hawaiian. All the Japanese people that showed up here, they, I mean, they weren't involved in the overthrow, so they all just got to leave, born and raised. The guys involved in the overthrow were Hawaiian citizens. They all just got to leave. That's the issue with bringing all of that stuff up. So I think I, I think I see a question who's actually been up there for a while. I'm sorry. Yeah. Telescope up there right now being decommissioned as the CSA. <clears throat> Okukea, brand new telescope, $2 million, sitting in a closet down one warehouse. All the other telescopes are producing good science. They're all productive, they're all doing good science up on a mountain. So they're sacrificing five by, the, by first light of TMT. It's not my call, it's UH's call. But that's not going to solve the problem. We still on zero plus zero equals zero by the end of the master lease. So yeah, we understand that fight is there. We understand TMT not going to be built on a mountain. Yeah. See, but you're right, Uncle. That's, that's what we face. That's why we too late. The process, the train left. The process already is settled. 
it's up to the governor now to make the call if we're going or not. That's pretty much bottom line. Uh -huh. Yeah, um, I mean, I think Wally pretty much covered it. You know, that 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 is kind of out of our hands. What needs to be done kind of falls onto the power that be. Um, I will say in terms of facts though about like just how big TNT really is, the Aloha Stadium aspect, I'm, I don't think it's actually completely correct. The actual structure itself, though it will be about 18 stories tall, I don't think, uh, what, Roy, if you want to chime in about how the actual landscape is going to be. The, the, side. the footprint of TNT is smaller than the footprint of the Costco on the island. Yeah, so the issue, the issue here is that this is part of what Imua TMT has been addressing, which frankly is a lot of disinformation that's being spread by the protesters. Now, I think some of the protesters might try and deny well, that the leadership is involved, but the Kia'i up on the mountain got a social media tent and they know exactly what they're doing and they're spreading a lot of stuff that's not true, starting with nuclear powered telescope. That was a bunch of nonsense. <laughs> Sorry with the alone. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what everybody, that's what everyone keeps saying. But their media team's really good at spreading this stuff around. Like our logo that was spread by all these organizations, one of them was run by a leader of the protest. I didn't want to, I didn't want to interject. I mean, we're, we're not assuming where it came from. We're just saying somewhere out of the abyss of the internet, that spread like wildfire. Right? Well, I mean, so, you right, might not be assuming. I'm kind of assuming. I, 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 give, I, I give her that. I'm definitely yeah, thinking that they're... And also the fact that the footprints the size of the Lowest Stadium is not true. I mean, it's like we said, it's not, it's not going to be that big. So, and the fact that it's going to damage the aquifer, it's not going to impact the aquifer. It's not true. And that keeps getting spread around left, right, and center. It's not so, going to damage it at all in any number of We'll have no, I mean, so, we, we have extensive testimony on this. And I mean, you can speak to it too. I mean, if you actually go to the EIS, who signed that? Kiloha signed that. No, she did not. She passed it on. She printed. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Hold up, hold up. Look at that. Money, money, money. That's what you like. We are too young to protect what we get. What we get left. Hold up, 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 hold up. We're having a panel of discussion with these guys sharing their morale. Everybody, hey, everybody can email. And I will have everybody up on the, the panel discussion work. next time. Them up. We will, I will, I, I know, but everyone keeps raising their hand. They want to keep talking. So I'll, I'll run talking through. The point, the point, okay, I got, I got the <laughs> The point is the aquifer is not going to be impacted. So Makana, why don't you speak to that? I mean, just from a broader perspective, everybody, like just the, the general questions that, that we're all having about from the environmental standpoint, this wouldn't have gone through, guys, if it was as detrimental as, as, as what's being said online. And... I mean, this is just based on environmental surveys, geological, hydrological. I mean, we even met with people on, who actually stay at Halepohoku, who actually studied the bugs, who actually studied the wildlife up there, and actually went up there and ha painstakingly by hand went through each of the sites and actually made sure and did whatever necessary testing you needed to do to determine whether or not the telescopes and this new project up there will actually be detrimental to the lifestyle. And for, for us, for the water that we consume down in the bottom. I mean, I understand. Like, I was talking to one of my family members about this. And I was like, what? And maybe this is why people think that their TMT support is a horrible, but I was asking, like, what kind of horrible person would I have to be if I thought this thing was actually going to impact the aquifer in Big Island? I called up the Don Thomas, one of the experts that was quoted. And I talked to him about the aquifer. And he, I was, I was learning. We're all learning. And that's the important thing. I mean, like, I got to relax. My hair goes crazy. My eyes get really big. And I got to get this. But the whole thing about, the aquifer is that if anything even fed, so TMT specifically is a zero waste facility, right? They truck everything down off the mountain. And on top of that, if anything fell on the mountain up at the top, it filters through the lava rock for thousands of years. So even the half-life of most of the fuel, it would just evaporate before it got to the aquifer. So it's not going to impact the aquifer at all. And, that, and that's, again, that's the other thing about it. It's like, how do you want to do the joint fact-finding in our society? Because we have this whole process, right? We go through all of this, we go through all this stuff, all these books, all these testimony. And if people just say, I don't believe it, there's not much more, I mean, this, how are we, are we just gonna say that every single time? We don't believe it? So that's why we gotta have a new process. And until somebody proposes it, I don't know what to say about it. So this is one question that came in, it expands 
past the telescope because that's what. Never mind the questions over there. There's questions right here in front of you. We already said that the ground rules are emailing. I'll go, I'll go back here once the email me questions. So we're gonna read the questions from the email. So I'll, I did this for everybody here. Uh, Walter, I'll start with you. What are each of your thoughts on Native Hawaiian self-determination? In your opinion, is what is currently happening on Mauna Kea self-determination? Yes, no, and why? I'm sorry, I didn't hear. I didn't hear your question. What What are your thoughts? Do you think what's happening on Mauna Kea now is Native Hawaiian self-determination or not? No, I don't. If you look at the issue of self-determination, that goes beyond the uh, protest on the mountain. That may be an element of what they're trying to do in the end, but I don't think in, it, uh, in and of itself it's an issue of self-determination. Why, why don't you think ultimately it's an issue of self-determination? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think so because it's an issue which is smaller, actually, in spite of the size of the mountain and the vociferous protests. It's smaller than the issue of self-determination. Self-determination goes far beyond the issue of whether or not you should build a uh, telescope on Mauna Kea. That's my thought. I think my opinion on it is um, kind of a mix. I wouldn't necessarily say no, but I think in a way it's I, I kind of going what Wally keeps saying is like you know it's a good sign that the Lahui is growing, that we have the voice, we we we're coming together. But when I say we, and I wouldn't necessarily say unanimously all Native Hawaiians, and I think that's where we are right now, is that even within our own community, the people of Hawaii, that, that there is this disconnect, that, that somewhere there was a wedge. And you know, whole point of point should have happened a long time ago, so we could have not come to this point, where things were not even in development, we could have had the, the, the talk story sessions that we needed, we, need, we could have aired everything out. So. I mean, to address the, the self-determination, I do think it is there, but I don't think it is at maximal capacity. I think, I think it, it could be a lot stronger. Wally? Will stop me off, but... <laughs> and again, it's, it's about 100 years of tears and failures by the state, failure from the Department of Hawaiian Homes to address the needs of all people. It's failure, people. What is failure? Failure from the, from the United States Department of Interior. $28 million. This commission sued the state. They awarded us, Judge Castaneda, you get a good look at that, $28 million for administrative costs. That doesn't put one Hawaiian on the land. Our budget is $300 million a year for the department in order to justify and rectify the, the debt list, what everybody calling them. You're dying on the waiting list. We just don't waste $10 million. It's okay. It's not okay. What Brad Ovia was talking about, building home, homes for our people, yes. It's justified, the hurt is real, the tears are real. You're not Hawaiian unless you're part of the land. You gotta be on the land. Sorry. It's the fact. It's the fact. I mean I think I mean I think I'm more on Walter's position on that. I don't think that I mean self-determination is a it's not defined in any specific way, so I guess you can say whatever you want about it. And I don't think this is the way to go about it. I mean, we have the legal process, and that's the, my, my issue is what's the system we're gonna have? I don't think just protesting and getting a social media platform is gonna be the way to have self-determination. And also, we're all part of this community now. I mean, I think being part of the United States of America is a good thing. I think it's great. I think being part of the state of Hawaii is great. And I think it can be improved, and the system can be better through the use of the political system, through the courts, and people are working on that. And through the dialogue, through the freedom of speech we have now, I think it's good to have that conversation, to put that out there. So there's some just some sense of discussion, and I think, you know, Wally's point about fellow who we coming together, that's valuable to have that conversation, if we're gonna have it honestly, 
that's good. But ultimately, I'm not sure why we need more self-determination in that sense. I mean, we have the process, we fight the battles in the community, go through the community process, and then we go there. There's a question here from uh, a lady who I've heard speak before, and she says that she is one of the few people who was on Mauna Kea when the first telescopes were built, she said there were no complaints, or there were no protests at the first pro uh, telescopes being placed. I think, believe is her question. And she said the only issue there was was a mid-level facility at Hale Pohaku. So she wanted to ask you, Judge, uh, what protests you were talking about. Are you talking only in 2000 that you saw protests, not before that? Judge, this is for you. Just my recollection of what was going on at the time, far before 2000. So, do you want to go for it? I mean, or do you want to address the questions in the audience? I, Makana, I love your style. <laughs> you, like, I, um, I, oh, we know he made one and one. He did not cut with our coat. Well, he could cool and he will, my money. I don't know in a comedy, he might come out of our company. Kaya mo nawa, e kumukula noo i ako kahit pa ako. E maupo na i ako pa lo ako kakumu ako kahit ako kakumu ulo. Kaya halak ako yung mai, o i ang mga akato e ho pa ane ilo ko na kula. Kaya halak ako yung mai, o kaya o ani ko alam mo ako hindi. Kaya halak ako yung mai, o mau ane kaya mo mga akolo. Kaya halak ako yung mai, o o i akolo mo akako pa lo e ikeni a e maupo po ni. E ala ka unge e bala au wai i ka ukeiki. Ka ukeiki ke ia. Hele no oia ki kolo na ko alo ma kohine. Hele no oia ho o paa ia mo haa mina a pauloa. I nga, ua paa no lakou o kea mo opio a kakoe i ke nei. O kea mo opio na lakou no oia ala ka i nei ke papahana e ho o malu. A e maala ma mau ia mau na kea. E ala ka ue bala au wai. Ya lakau, ya mau opio. Ina wau he kumukula. Wau me kanui o makau na kumukula. Mai kapai o na makaiki he umi kumai. Kana hikuma mau makaiki. Kapai o ka umi kumamai. Kana walu mau makaiki. Ka ho. Ho oi kaika ana. Ka ho uru anui. A lava pono kai kaika. And, he, and, and I understand. Yeah, it was the same ground rules for everybody. What's yeah. the question? I don't. Maybe translate. Pehala e maupopo e o ko. Maupopo ni ya u ka o ko. Ua ua ho papa ano wau. Ya ui ho. I ka maka mua ko o maka ana keia mea mo TNT. Ma mua nei no no o TNT. Mai ka i no pa hae. Mai ka i pa. A i ke no wau. I ka pae o na o pio. I na la ko ke ho i ka i ka nei. Ke i ke nei no ho i ka ko. I understand where you come from. I understand what you're saying. Actually, what what's the question? Well, you know, if you understand, then you answer the question. <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, someone needs to translate. Okay, yeah, I know. Okay, let me do this. So that everybody can understand and not I mean, we didn't have the entire team to balance. I'll be fair. I'll be fair. What then can you tell me would be the value? I like how you think, Mr. Ishibashi. What then is the value of these many years of our people? My parents and my grandparents told me, don't be a dumb, lazy Hawaiian. Go to school. So what then would be the value of myself and the cumulative? I'm the one and a half, almost the second generation of teachers. We, are, we came from a very handful, small handful of you. They taught us that became the major pushing vehicle 
And the young people that are leading this are really all the products of this and education. What's, what's the question is, what is what the value? What is the value of all of this Hawaiian education that has been promoted and promulgated when we cannot stand by the understandings, the values, and the worldview that they now adhere to? Because, you, because I understand. You're this panel here, just like my father, my father and his wife do not support me. They, they see the world as you do. I understand, I understand. So, would, Wally, you wanna take, you wanna take the question first? Well, and, and that's one real difficult because of different generational was being taught. Me was couple, when I could talk Hawaiian, they couple us from talking Hawaiian, you gotta learn English, you gotta go to school, you gotta do that. Now it's changed. That was who has grown. The kids now is educated, they understand the history. The language makes all the difference in the world when it comes to a level. It makes all the difference to understand our people. It, it, it's one big difference than just learning English. So yes, it's, where we go from here, that's, that's the question. Because we have a whole different generation of our children and understand and, and yearn to be Hawaiian. They yearn for that. They, they, they feel. They just no more place for growth for them. Feel left out in their own, their own land. If I could just add a little bit to what Uncle was saying. I mean, at least for me, the way I view this is that, with kind of like you said, every step along the way, you use an example, you're a product of, you know, kind of like your parents and what they instilled in you. And same with me, I'm college, well, my parents instilled in me, and my kid, you'd be the same way. You'd be a product of what I instilled into them. And I think for me, the value in all of this is actually looking to the future, is, is giving them the opportunity to find more in this world. And I, I'm not saying forget about the past. Bring that. That's your genealogy. That's your history. You carry that with you. But how can we take what happened in the past, what, 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 what brought us to here, and how can we look forward with that? How can we use the past to light the way forward? So, I mean, that, that's at least my interpretation of, of, of how I'd answer your question about the value, is, is taking the, the history, the past, good and bad, taking what we have now, and figuring out how we can make the future much brighter than it is now. Well, anyone else want to answer? There are a few questions. You know, there's, when you talk about value, what, what I see as value is, what is this doing for Hawaii? Simply that. What is this doing for Hawaii? For Hawaii, it's bringing economic wealth. It's bringing world recognition of the astronomy, astronomical that worked through me. <laughs> astronomical ventures of our ancestors and how they came from their place using that same astronomical system as we're trying to explore now. But we're expanding it. We're expanding it beyond the world that our ancestors knew and exploring maybe other worlds that are out there. You know, this is universal knowledge that we're talking about. We're not talking about just annexing one state to another, one country to another. We're talking about universal knowledge that's useful to everybody. And everybody will be grateful to Hawaii for having expanded their knowledge. That's my view of this. I apologize saying I understood you. I didn't. I don't speak Hawaiian. So. But I know where you, I, I heard you speak before, and I, and I know you're, and, and you might not, I don't know if you believe me, but I, I understand where you're coming from. I feel the passion, right? I mean, I'm, I'm here. This isn't my job. Yeah. Uh, um, this is literally my vacation day. Uh, my day off, right? Like, I, I, I showed up when I saw the protests because people were speaking out for Native Hawaiians and this whole story was like, oh, the Native Hawaiians are angry. And I was like, oh, well, well, last time I checked, I was Native Hawaiian and I'm, I think this is awesome. So where's my voice? And the whole narrative is always just like, this is what my people want. And I was like, I don't, I don't know, I don't want that. I want to be able to speak for myself and speak out for people. So what I meant was I understand where you're coming from. I feel that passion. And the, the learning, all that knowledge, all that learning, the Hawaiian culture, that's, there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wasted. It's all beautiful. It's all awesome. It's all what we should continue to do. I obviously think that we need to have more conversation about the history 
about the story about who, what the wrongs were, the extent of, I think there's an exaggeration to the hundred years of tears. I think we can learn more together about that. And we can, I want, I want to be able to free ourselves from that, that need to get, you know, re re reparations. I don't want to have to always be thinking about that all the time. But at the same time, we have it, right? We have the HHL. Spill the homes. The land is there. What are we doing? I don't know. I went to talk to them. I'm like, what are you guys doing? I don't understand. So I understand where you're coming from. That's, that's why I'm here too. I mean, I, I'm not going anywhere. I, I live here, right? I was born and raised here. My kids born and raised here. My wife born and raised here. Like, I want this because I think it's great for us, all of us. I think we can tell the story in a way where we can meld our culture, all the learning, the Hawaiian language, using Hawaiian language to name the objects we discover. That's, that's awesome. That's beautiful. And I mean, somebody said money is my value. I mean, yeah, money is important. I need money to pay the rent. Like, that's what I need. Like, that's how it works. Even in the kingdom, everybody had to produce something, right? You had to do something. And this is the modern, this is how it works, the modern world. I'm, I mean, I've talked to people that said, you know, maybe if there was a whole native Hawaiian entity, it'd be okay to build the telescopes because that would have approved it. And to, to me, that, that opinion is, is weird because it's just like, well, like, that's the whole point. Like, we're building it together now. We're a community here. We can share it. And that, that's where I'm coming from. That's, I mean, I understand the passion and I appreciate the fact that people are standing up for what they believe and I love, I love it. That's why I went to Mount Akea. You know how many pro TMT people went to Mount Akea? You know how hard I had to work? to drag this guy out of school and make him go to Mount Kea with me? I was working him in Zippies for breakfast. Like, we gotta go. We gotta talk to the people there. You gotta be there to talk to them. And even if I disagree with what they say and how they say it, I still wanna go have lunch with Kaleiko. I mean, I told him that. I was like, let's go, man. 10 years from now, he's like, there's not gonna be anything now. I was like, yeah, I wanna meet you 10 years. Let's have a chat. Because that passion, that energy is what we need in a community. That's people that are engaged. So that's where, that's where I'm coming from. That's why I think all this knowledge is valuable. It's important. It's great, and we should do more. And I know you had your hand up a long time. I know, I know. Thank you. I have a question about education. Um, so I work at UH on OA in Native Hawaiian Student Services, and I'm also a PhD student. And I'm also an educator. I teach Introduction to Research, in fact, in the honors program. Um, I wanna, I, I'm curious, this is a response to something that was said earlier. Why we're putting all of this credit to the TMT itself for raising Hawaiians into a, a good position in STEM, when astronomy has been in Hawaii for decades, and that has never been a priority. My second, my, my kind of context to that is, in actuality, because of the things that Hina is talking about, right? Hawaiians have taken ownership of our education for just as many decades. We've recovered our language. We've recovered our history. We've recovered. Andy, Andy, I, I okay. know. What's the so question? What I'm, what I'm trying to say is, we actually are the leaders in STEM at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Okay, so if, if astronomy is behind, they should be held accountable to that. Not we go bang and what? say, oh, now finally Hawaiians are what's, going to be Andy, safe. Andy, what's, what's, the, what's the question? What's the question? <laughs> I think I see it. The okay. question was, why are we why are we acting like why are we putting yeah. all of these eggs in this this story about okay. the TMT when uh, astronomy's been here forever and we're already STEM leaders? Hi, right. um, great question actually. I think the best way, and I apologize if the way I said it made it sound like we aren't already. I guess what I'm trying to say is we are growing by far. Twenty years ago, thirty years ago, my dad then went to school till now. Yeah, I would definitely say we have grown tremendously. The community has grown humongously. And all I'm saying is that TMT is just another way for us to grow some more. You know, how many how many professors get at UH now? KS grad and what I mean, at least for me, I know at least three, like personally, and get plenty more. And you know, that that's just an example. But but why are we okay with telling the story? Like we don't got nothing as Hawaiians in education. I don't think I don't think we're telling I, I don't we're not telling the story that way. I mean what I'm the story I'm telling and Wally, I mean Wally, you can speak to this too, but the story I'm telling is that it's adding to it, it's growing and it's it's providing more ways to do it. And it's not you know the other reason that people the other reason people talk about TMT in that way is because this stuff is not gonna end with TMT. The the, the protesters up there, the protectors, they're talking about taking all the telescopes off. So they ain't about TMT. This is about the whole mountain. 
This is about astronomy. A lot of people up there want it all gone. So it's coming. What I, what I will say, though, to address what it you is. were saying about astronomy being here, or at least on the Mount established for about 60 years, is that going back to kind of what they're saying, yeah, a lot of stuff was not porno that happened. You know, and, and, I, and I'm not saying that people who did do their work didn't do their job, because you know, I see people in the audience who were actually involved in a lot of the environmental aspects of the Mount back when the first telescope was up there. So I don't want to take credit away from them, but somewhere along the line, something didn't happen right. Promises for things to come down, promises for contribution to the community never happened. I mean, even if it's not a promise you have in paper, when you have science occurring on the mono on our land, you would expect it to come down and bring it back, bring the EK you learn and bring it back to the rest of the community. And I admit, it hasn't been that efficient because we're here today with having this discussion. And I guess the way I'm looking at it now, that TNT is trying to change that. They're coming in and they're working so hard to actually change the way, be an example, not just to the telescopes on the Mauna, to the leadership on the Mauna, but the other projects that want to come here. I mean, Hawaii is just, again, it's just, Hawaiians, we weren't just astronomers, we were engineers, we were, multi we were a multifaceted culture. We are multifaceted people. And this telescope right now is just one example of how we can, it's just an example of trying to be a leader in that and just bringing it, just adding more, more to the soup, more flavor, more diversity. To, to be fair to you, Mahana, yeah. it's my daughter who's in, Fourth grade on the way right now, mm -hmm. wants to pursue astronomy. Mm -hmm. I will 100% support her, but because of the way that she's being raised with her values, Sorry. she will not. She will not pursue astronomy on Mauna Kea. She will not pursue astronomy on Mount Graham, where the Apaches have, have and, said and, no to oh, those telescopes, and probably not in La Palma either, because their environmental. Groups hold up, hold up, Andy, Andy. We never. Everybody, everybody's asking questions. I got it. I got email me. I want you on the next panel. We'll have you up there and we'll have a talk. So Wally, I want you to address the question of how do you think TMT is going to, uh, it was an email question, how do you think Hawaii will make living conditions, how do you think TMT will make living conditions in Hawaii as a whole better? And again, raising the living standards of, of the working families of, of Hawaii. It's, and again, it's only half a loaf, it's only part of the equation, it's not the whole equation. It's just part, and again, we're just trying to add to the half a load. There's another question that's related to this, Wally, and I've got a couple of them. Is how many people from Hawaii work up on Mauna Kea right now? Like local people, you know? Oh, well, like in the last, however long telescope reference was. Yeah, like we years. probably 300. Let me see if you see me. Oh, 300, local. SDA engineers not counting your scientists, but it's more local people working on the summit on the current telescope. And Makana, what did you see when you went up there? Oh, we went to CFH, I remember we went to CFHT, so I've never been to the summit, I've never been to the telescopes. I had my own, I guess you call it prejudice of what I expected, coming from Ohio, being in, or not coming from Ohio, going to school in Ohio, seeing the kind of people there, so I thought I was gonna have a similar encounter. And I remember when I brought up to him, like, you know, just see the kind of snow up there. But they actually, he said, hey, come, come meet the snow. And then there's all these local guys from they all came down. It was it, it, it was just great talking to them, talking about what they do. That these that these individuals are so pivotal to the actual function of the telescope. That if they if they decided to to you know protect them on or to go down and uh, join the protectors, I mean that's it. Oh, the telescope not gonna work. Like Hawaiians are so pivotal to the operations, the functionality of science up there that if they left. I don't know who's gonna do them, I'm not a scientist. I know that for a fact, I'm a theorist. I can tell you that right now, we don't know how to do that. <laughs> is, there, is there any way that, there's, there's a question about how individual members of the community can use the TMT. I'm assuming the answer to that question is that we cannot, I can't just go up there and look through the telescope. So in relation to that, can members of the community do it? And then what do you know, I don't know if you know Makana or Wally about what uh, University of Hawaii will get access to the telescope. Yeah, we have some viewing time, but right now, because of remote viewing, you can have access you know, <coughs> remotely now. You don't have to be on the summit. Your technicians, your engineers on the job site, that's just to prep for the, for the viewing remotely. So a lot of change in the technologies on a, on, a, on a mountain. So that's part of the, yeah, we have viewing time on TMT. We're gonna have to. What kind of do you know 
maybe read about that more detail from your from your standpoint as a student. I'm, I'm trying to remember. I, I thought it was somewhere along the what was it something like thirty percent or ten percent? Well, Roy might actually know. So, oh, yeah, I guess you know. so the general public. Just like any big research project, like you can't just go and use CERN or the Super yeah, yeah, yeah. Collider, right? But we have programs where in 47 high schools where they, high school students get to use the big telescopes on Mauna Kea. That is unheard of anywhere in the world for large telescopes. Like Europe has European large telescopes. No high school students use that. So, and in addition, all of the data from the telescopes are public. So in the event that you had that uh, knowledge of how to deal with that data, you can download it all from the different telescope websites and process it. I mean, just like anything, you can't just go out on like a long line fishing boat and magically long line fish. You have to gain some expertise. But uh, we do integrate with the community that way. So the, and there are telescopes on Haleakala that are purely for educational use. And we have middle and high school students who are going to the Intel Science and Engineering Fair because they're doing projects with us. Uh, using those uh, resources that are purely educational. Sorry to let Lloyd give speeches, but he actually just knew the answer to that one. So you've got to be on the next <laughs> panel. Right? Now, somebody asked me a question, which is fair. Why is there no female representation on this panel? That's just my bad. Um, Malia, you got to be on the next panel. Um, it, it's nice when I go into a building that gentlemen open the doors. Thank you for opening the doors, gentlemen. Anytime. I, you, that's just me. we, we, we got to get okay. you. That's my bad. Actually, yeah, no, the, the, there are, I, I mean, to actually, if I could just comment a little bit more on that. There actually are quite a I'll, I'll say a good number of Wahine involved in astrophysics, and I mean I'm not going to drop names right now, not the time or the place, but um, I think I think whoever sent that a good point, and I think you bring up a good point to Sam for the future when we can have them on the panel, or at least give them the opportunity. Um, I'm going to address this question, Sam, because I think I've seen your hand up for quite a bit. I think, or, yeah. I'm actually the one who said that. Oh, oh. But I have a thank you. It was nice meeting you, by the way, at the first rally. Oh, oh. I happen to be the great grand niece of Wapiti. Yeah. So my grandmother is his sister, and I just want to say hello. I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't. She's, She's your great niece. <laughs> <laughs> she family. You have to speak louder. Oh, color my eyes. I said, hi, I'm Walter. <laughs> <laughs> and, and oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> The Law of Spirit Law? Yes. Yes, I know. I would have the Law of Spirit Law. Have you reviewed Section B of that law? I don't, I would not. I mean, I could probably pull it on my phone. You're an attorney, yeah? Yes, that's true. S still, so far, I don't know what happened to me after this, but I, I don't know. <laughs> the Law of Spirit Law, I mean, it's an important. I do you think that you should look it up. It's important, um, but it's not going to be fundamentally dispositive I mean, on this I would, issue. I would disagree wholeheartedly with your assertion on that. I mean, Walter, I have Walter, I have you. <laughs> yeah, she I, I'm not sure how to answer that question. Uh -huh. um, because, they're, they're, I don't know, if you have to look at this project on uh, Mauna Kea and look at the mountain from the standpoint of going somewhere where Hawaiians have led us in the past and can lead us in the future. And it's an important extension of Hawaiian culture. That's my that's my view of this mountain. Um, a follow-up question, just briefly. What will you do if you lose? Well, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back to work. So I'm yeah. going to be, I mean, that's what I'm going to do. There's another question. Um, are you... That's, Thanks, bro. Are you calling today for the government to use police to use all necessary and sufficient force to remove the protesters? I have been calling for that from the start. I think that the governor should clear the road. Now, that obviously does not have to involve tear gas. I mean, the first arrest were, this is actually something we had an interesting conversation about recently. The first arrests were exactly how people in Hawaii want to see an arrest happen if it needs to happen, which is the 
some of the police officers were related to some of the kapuna that they were arresting, and they were escorting them to the van. And I, I mean, I would, I, I, I think the, I think the Kiai went overboard in their description of how the police showed up. Frankly, I think the police were extremely respectful and extremely nice. And I saw a lot of stories out there about how, and I've heard them even on from the sea today, where they were saying as. There's, you know, it's, it's, they showed up armored and they have these guns and all this stuff. It's like, well, they're cops. They have to have protection. I mean, there's this, if you've seen the language that's online, you would be kind of a little bit worried too. You would want security. You would want to make sure you're protected. But ultimately, nobody was hit. And it's happened, it did happen before, right? We, on, on Haleakala, it wasn't as, it wasn't as peaceful. And, and I think that's one of the things about Governor Yige. A lot of people have criticized him, and I and I and I think that he should enforce the law in the first instance and and clear the mountain. But you know, I think he won two tough elections. He's got his finger on the pulse of what we want to see in this state. I don't think anybody in this state I, I wants to see anyone getting hit on that mountain or beat up or tear gas or anything. Everybody's just like we understand the passion, we understand where everyone's coming from. And, and everyone should have the right to speak their mind and to protest. But ultimately, we have to move forward because until someone comes up with a better system of government, we have to enforce laws. Because so eventually somebody, even including the people on the mountain, are gonna have something that they want to have happen that somebody else will not want to have happen. And they're gonna be very upset when the law is not enforced in their favor. As they've often said, when they went to the Supreme Court and they went through the legal system, I mean, it's only when the law is not on their side that there's this complaining, and that's why my, that's part of my issue. But that's ultimately what I think, yes, I think they'll have to do that. I don't know if anybody else wants to speak to that. The question of whether or not the governor should enforce the law immediately. It goes without question. That goes without question. <clears throat> that's the law. You gotta enforce the law. <laughs> We came this far already. That's the process of arrest is, is actually non-violent. Corporal Law really does play a big part in this whole, this whole process. It's when you get violent during the arrest when it, when it does escalate. But the process of being arrested, you see it at Sherwood, you know, we don't like to see Kupunas arrested, but it is what it is because we allow it to go this far when it comes to. But why don't we stop it? You know, I, I, have, to, I have to agree with Wally. You know, if you break the law, you're going to get arrested. My nephew was arrested. That's not the first time, too. He had been in another protest way back in 1974. And he knew, he knew the consequences. He didn't come to the uncle and say, hey, do I do this because I, 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 I don't want to get arrested? That's his race. I've gotten some email questions that are probably more for the Kiai, so I can't really answer all of them. Sorry, guys. Well, actually, get, there was a hand in the shadow. Go for it. Go for, for it. a while. I think. I'm sorry. I don't have my glasses. So I think. It's, oh, um, so I don't have a statement, but I will say, Kalamai, you know, selling a whole mountain for half a loaf of bread doesn't seem to be. A anti, reason. anti. Okay. What's, what's, what's the like question? My question? I think this is the exact problem, I mean, the kind of the same issues we're facing now, that even within our own community, not all Hawaiians agree with one another. And kind of like, you know, I mean, just looking back in history, the couple system itself, or, or at least the, the I couple, was abolished by our mo'i, by our elite. And they're the ones who actually said, you know, like, you know, got cut. So, at least, ju ju just from that example, I'm, I'm sure a lot of Hawaiians didn't agree with that. There are people who, who didn't agree with with that decision that they made, that the decision that our leaders made at the time. So I, at least for me, like, I'm, I'm not over here trying to say, like, you know, pick my history as to what I want to agree with and whatnot. I guess what I'm trying to say is that the past, there was things that happened. There, these people were influential. 
and that we need, you know, we need to move forward. There are dreams and aspirations that we want in the future. And I guess what I'm trying to say is, how is it that we can have the, in coming back to what Wallace saying, we're dealt a certain set of cards. How can we play these cards to the best of our advantage? My dad always said, you know, life gives you cards, and sometimes these cards aren't the best, but it's up to you if you like fold or if you like keep playing the game. And you know, the, you know, more of the story is just like, sometimes things are rough in life, and you gotta make the best of what you got. And I'm not necessarily saying we're settling with this. I mean, at least the way I'm seeing the cards that, that are being dealt right now is that this is this like this is like an ace in a hole, I and mean, we can use it as an ace in a hole for us. You know, in the past, maybe not so, but now this this one that's coming, I mean, it's coming. Like it's it's gonna be good the way the way I see it at least. So to to address well, your question, well, you want to speak to that? Yeah. Well, the half a loaf of bread is because we already have the half a loaf on our side. To make the whole loaf, let TMT be part of the process. That's what it is. Because we already have the answer that our children already advance. We already get STEM going on with our kids nowadays. So TMT is just our half of the loaf that we need. It's just an opportunity to move forward. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Well, so keep going. Uncle, 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 Moving forward, so. Anyway. Oh, yeah, difficult, difficult question. Because we already have um, the history of the astronomy during our navigation, so we just got to take that to the next step. And that's what TMT is, looking back in time, looking back to the origin, origin, origins of us mankind. It's about the universal, it's about the world, it's about all mankind. That's what it is. I think the one thing I would say on that also is it, this is this is I think important. At some level, in the society I want to live in, there's a separation of church and state, and we don't establish state-backed religions. We don't establish them whether or not we call them the host culture religion or not, because th not everybody in the host culture believes in the religion, and that's how the that's where the bottom line is. We don't establish religions with state backing. And so the Aikapu, that's a religious belief. And fundamentally, it's being balanced with all the interests we have. And that's how it needs to be, because that's the society we live in. And that's a society I think we should live in, because that's the best way to do it. Because governments based on religion are nasty. And I don't want that here. Hold on. The green started. There's, yeah, we got, we got a lot of... Well, Uncle, you know, you asked the, you got yeah. a question, you were the first one to raise your hand and I talked to you, so. Yeah. You yeah, got um, one of the questions from uh, the protesters is that we don't need the 30 meter telescope because what are we going to learn about the universe by having a 30 meter telescope? But I know that in Galileo's time, his science and his astronomy and his telescope really changed the whole concept of man's place in the universe and where. Uncle, what's the? I think I know where you're going, but what is yeah. the, What is your question? What is the value of having a 30 meter telescope observe and research and obtain knowledge from the universe? Uh, okay. I mean, purely, okay, let's just, if you don't even look at the notion of education, the community give back, let's just look at it as, as what it is, a 30 meter telescope. I mean, within the Northern Hemisphere, it's the biggest, right, in the Northern Hemisphere. And one of the things that I think, I think some people have been confused on is that they think once you get a telescope on the Earth, you can see the whole sky, but that's not necessarily the case. You kind of see patches of the sky, and where it is is pivotal to what patches you can see. So having actually the 30 meter telescope here in Hawaii, on Mauna Kea, where 
the geometry of the mona itself is perfect for the way the wind flows over. The way the humidity is up there makes it really good to see certain uh, parts of the spectrum clearly. And just the overall lack of city lights, like, I mean, it's in the middle of the ocean. So you don't really see, like, you don't have a lot of uh, stray light noise coming into your signal. So just from a pure observational point of view, it, it will literally be the clearest, biggest picture you can have. The resolution is, is phenomenal, at least just from, I believe, what simulations and uh, just, you know, order of magnitude calculations you can make. Um, that's just purely the observation and science gathering aspect. And then, and you, everyone's heard me talk about the education aspect, so I'm not gonna go into that. But just, you know, if we're going along the lines of what Galileo did and that kind of just pure science aspect, I mean, that's what a 30 meter telescope will do. I think one of the other things I've read also, and I'm not the expert, but probably go ahead, we need to use you on the next panel too, but, um, is the fact that, especially the difference between Mauna Kea and Canary Islands is that it's higher up, so there's a better infrared spectrum, so you can actually see life on other planets. That's one of the points of TMT, to see if we can find aliens. Walter, do you have anything else on that subject? I got a oh, question. Walter, Walter. Walter. I'd like to make one Walter. Walter. Probably the best viewing spot in the whole world. Thanks, Walter. I mean, if you want to speak on the science aspect of it, I mean. Yeah, Team T going to take us to another level. That's, that's all I was saying. And, and it's the best place. It's an honor to be in Hawaiian and have that opportunity. But that being said, we're talking about spiritual. We spiritual beings having a human experience. If you understand that concept, we live forever. We're searching for who we are. Why are we here? And where are we going after this? We're trying to find those answers. We're trying to find those questions. It is within all of us, whether you believe in God or not. It's just human nature to seek that knowledge, to seek that wisdom, to help guide and direct us in this life. We're wrapping up on the end here. I saw I saw this hand here. I saw one hand in the back, but maybe that person has vacated the building. So, Uncle, with the camera. All right. Um, you're talking about the scope of it, right? Why couldn't they, uh, question. Why, could, why couldn't they have upgraded the others? Okay, the question is, Donald Trump has even said we're building war environment out in the space. Is that where this thing's going to end up? Uh, we're not, well, I'm not sure, I think the, I'm not sure what the question is, except yeah, no. to the extent that, so if you're asking about space telescopes, one of the things I'm asking, uh, Gordon Squires actually came here, he's the spokesman for TMT, and I asked him this question at a panel discussion, or at a presentation he gave, why couldn't we build TMT in space? And he fundamentally said, it's really just way too expensive, and you can get way better viewing from ground-based telescopes at a much more efficient cost than building them in space. You just can't build them that big in space. And to address another, like another point about just say upgrading the other telescopes that are already established, the thing about that is that it's not as, it's easier said than done, best put it. Like it's one thing like where, where you have electron, like so there are certain telescopes that don't necessarily go out of date because the electronics can constantly be updated. They have the ability to like remove certain things and insert new things, software, hardware, et cetera. But there are certain things that are just too hard and too expensive to change. So like, again, like to, to have a third, like a 30 meter mirror in one of the other telescopes would just be very expensive. I mean, Roy, I'm sure I could speak on the cost. Like, you would have to flatten part of the mountain well, to do it. you got foreign countries already in the well, Big Island with I'll, geothermal, right? I'll go, I'll, okay, I'll go. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So we wrapped up most of the email questions, which is amazing to me. And sorry if I didn't get to all of them. Some of them person. Yes, I Nancy. question, and I don't mean to be rude, but you talked about um, social media and the different, and that's how I know about all this. So that's what I'm following, and that's how I form my opinions mm -hmm. on this. So you talked about the different stories that are being fabricated on social media and all that. So one of the stories that got to me was, I mean, there are several, but that on Hawaii Island, the, co the building code is nine stories. So I'm wondering how you folks got, and you said, we're legally permitted to build. So how did you folks get permission to build an 18 story building on the top of Mauna, Mauna Wakea when the building permit code on Hawaii Island 
only allows for nine-story buildings. So I want to know how that all happened. And then I also want to know, because I saw on social media, that um, Governor Ige, um, his cousin was the judge who presided over all of these different permitting um, things. So if you got your permitting thing from her, how do you feel if that's a conflict of interest or whatever? I mean, I feel like there's, you know, the, the, when, I, when I saw the, the news about how you're having this panel, my interpretation and the reason of my presence here is because I assume that you folks wanted to see how you guys could share the mama. I personally am not for TNT, but I am interested on how your folks' um, tactics or whatever to try to get peace among each other and our people, um, how you guys are gonna go about this. And to be quite honest with you, the, the half an hour that I sat in here, my blood was, you know, I wanna see peace within our people, yeah? However you're gonna do it, please try Thank to you. do it. You know, I, think, like, I think we had three, three questions yeah, in there. Yeah. Which one was the, the permitting process? The permitting Wally, process. I think you might be able to speak to that. I'm, I'm, we have to bring in the lawyers, which I, I don't know if I can sneak them in here. So, so fundamentally, the, the permitting process, that's literally what this is all about. So, so, so step number one, don't read uh, stuff on social media anymore. That's a really bad idea because there's just a lot of lies and intimidation being put out on social media. I, I cannot, I cannot tell. So go to Ibu. Go, I, it's not uh, nearly as much from the protein side, but I, I hear you. I hear you. I, but the, what you want to Google is the findings of fact and conclusions of law. That's the thing you want to search for. Finding the facts and conclusions of law. That will go over all of this stuff. And the permitting process went through. That's why the Hawaii State Supreme Court approved the process, because they said you went Who over. Who was the presiding so, judge? The Hawaii State Supreme Court has five justices, so it's, it's not just one person. The per permitting process is over. Forget about it. I cannot. And I don't think that our people can either. But the, I think this is a viable part of the argument as it's not. It, that's the whole point. It's, it's not. It's not. It's not viable. Like the permitting process was done correctly. The, the Supreme Court overruled it because they did it wrong, and then they said you did it right. So literally every single legal step that you're bringing up, they've satisfied every single one of them. That's not an issue. I, on, I am on not your the person. Behalf, though, it's on not. On your behalf. On your behalf. The protectors that are on the Mauna. And, and there's a reason, and I thought that it was very interesting that you said that you called for Governor Ige to, to arrest those people right now, and you're calling for that. And the, another the state question, of, okay, how anti, do you anti, feel anti, anti. about TMT paying for an $8.2 million bill that is bankrupting Hawaii County anti, when that anti. money could be going somewhere else? You My answer to that question yeah. is yeah. I've given that answer. I think the Kia, you need to take responsibility for the fact I that they're acting that illegally. Today, so, so, I, I think, so, 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 so you know panelists, that. we've been here for two hours. I want to give you guys a chance to say any closing remarks and wrap it up unless you really, I mean, I'll give you the chance to leave and if you want to stay. I have, I have no closing remarks. I have a question. Makana, hold up, so, hold up, hold up. What's your question? Sorry. So, just, just, just so we can officially close, guys, you know, and then, I mean, I'll be around at least. Someone in the corner over there with a guy in a brown suit, sorry, they, I think he left. But, you know, he was talking about the La Jolla. He got, you know, I think we all heard he got mad. From what I understood, he got mad because we were trying to speak for the La Jolla, or, or we were trying to speak for Hawaiian. But I think that is the problem. For me, that's, that's what gets my blood boiling. When people around the world, my, my, my colleagues, where I work at and everywhere else think that Hawaiians are not for this, that Hawaiians are against this. And I was like, no. I said like, there are Hawaiians with a voice and a passion and hurt, and they're channeling it through their voices this way. But for me, and many others like me, we have a voice, we have a passion, we have a vision as well, that we're channeling, ch channeling it this way. And you know, I'm not here to step on anyone's foot as to what you believe in or not, and I think that's why we need to have this sit down at the table and talk. Because obviously we have, com we have conflicting ideas even at the base of who we are as a community and as a people. So I just want to say, you know, I'm sorry if that's the message that I gave out, but I mean, personally, that, that's kind of the problem right now. And I really think to resolve that, we need to have the whole portal form session. We need to talk story. We need to talk about it. We need to get it all out in the air, face to face. So that's my closing remark. Thank you again for everyone who actually came. Wow. Mahalo, mahalo nui to all of you for your participation. Appreciate it greatly. As we move forward, 
Um, this is not the end. Even if we move the roadblock, we still <laughs> be on a summit. I see you on a mama. We still gonna be there, and you and the protectors will still be there. So it's not over. We still have to have the discussion. I think I think it's important. But please, let's unite. We, I cannot see the divisiveness in, in our in our people. You know, it hurts to see it ha happening this way, but it is what it is. <laughs> we gotta move forward together, all or more. That's what it is. So I appreciate all of your participation. As we move forward, let's let's unite, people. Let's unite. Hi. Thank you. And I really want to thank everybody. You know, whether you're pro TMT or only TMT, because this is this is how we get stuff going. This is right here. Have everyone come to the table. You know, the example, you know, some people may have felt hot-headed, some people may have felt uncomfortable, but I, I thank you guys so much for coming out of your comfort zone, whatever it may be, and talking with us right here. You know, whether it's through the email, you know, I, I know it was kind of a little unorganized with how we pick questions, but thank you for bearing with us, and thank you so much for having the discussion. I hope this is the kind of stuff we can promote more of, this, this sort of dialogue. Thank you again, Mahalo. On that note, so you can find out more about our group, emuatmt.org, emuatmt on Facebook. We're going to try and get more word out about this. I already got one guy email me who wants to be on the panel, so I welcome anybody email emuatmt at gmail.com. Let me know. We'll keep going. Thank you very much. Mahalo. Mahalo. And if anybody in the back didn't get to ask a question, they can come down and ask any questions. Yeah, I'll be here for a bit.